Okay. Right, that's as good as I get. That's it. I give up now. Okay, okay. Ready. I'm bueno, going to get comfortable. Okay. Lo, que había, lo que habíamos dicho para quedar hoy con Sara, bueno, era simplemente para charlar un ratito y tal, y haremos algunos vídeos más de, más de interrogatorio, de tema extraterrestres, de tema Reiki energías, de tema vida después de la muerte y todo eso, un poco más tal. Pero hoy, como era la primera vez, simplemente es para charlar un poquito y, y, y bueno, y, y preguntarle un poquito cómo nos conocimos y todo eso, ¿vale? Entonces la había, la había preguntado, bueno, si vosotros sabéis inglés, nosotros nos metemos ya directamente con el inglés. Sara, yes. I say that, that another day when we prepare and we, we will ask in another day, especially for about your experience with extraterrestrials and about the experience with after death, experience with energy and Reiki and all this. But just today is a little bit of, and with and another day about crystal skulls. Today a little bit just conversation to <laughs> to practice, um, just to yeah, just for us, just to know how how we meet each other. <laughs> Maybe this time after 20 times I will realize how we meet. We met each other here. <laughs> exactly there, exactly the place you are now. Yes. Because, because the, the way we meet, the way we meet is the more strange um, meeting I have had in my life. Because imagine, I tell just my, my position where I meet, no? I was, I was in my Husa. Husa is the small houses that you have there in the, in the Sina, in the Bedouin camp. And then I was in the, in the camp and then I just, wanted to go to the toilet in the morning. So I wake up in the morning, I just went through you, in front of your house, I just passed your house. Okay, okay, let, let me tell my bit then. Okay. Because I wake up in the morning and I have, a, I'm sitting on the edge of the bed and I have a vision of my, of me going up to a man. I think I seen you in the reception the night before, but I didn't know you and In the vision, I walk up and I say, my crystal skulls want to meet you. And I shake my head to my crystal skulls and say, I am never going to walk up to a complete stranger and say that. And, I, and then two minutes later, I see you walk past and I'm like, oh, shit, this is the person I'm supposed to say it to. And I can't, I can't, I can't. And then you disappear. And then like 10 minutes later, I see you coming back. So I quickly go down and I'm like, I come up to you and I'm quickly, my skulls want to meet you and <laughs> shove you into the hoosha to meet the skulls. Yeah, so in, in that moment, I was to the toilet and get a tea and come back and then <clears throat> ask me Sarah. And I, I was totally new. I didn't know nothing at all about crystal skulls. I didn't know nothing. Even in English, I didn't know the name skulls. I thought he, he was saying, School, mi colegio quiere conocerte. So imagine what I knew about crystal skulls. And then when you told me, yes, my skulls want to meet you, I was like, okay, anyway, if someone or something want to meet me, why not? Then I want together with you into your husa, into your house, and then and then we were there there together. And then you were start to explain me a little bit. What, what does this mean? Um, 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 why? So can you explain a little bit uh, how is possible that one crystal object can tell you that want to meet me? What means this? Honey, you have to wait. Allah wakfaring. Can you hear Allah wakfa? A ver. Oh, ah, yeah, ya, yeah, they are shouting. Bueno, this, they are in Saina, están en el, están en el Sinaí y están ahora haciendo la llamada a la oración, que debe ser la... Yeah, it's la very segunda. hard to hear you over God is great, honey. Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, finish. Satuana la ilahi la lawa Muhammad Rasulullah bismillahi Rahman al rahim alhamdulillah y rabia la rabia. You remember the man at Luxor? You remember mm. the man at Luxor Temple? Yes. That was this in, man is holy, Danny. This that was man in, is in, holy. That was in Karnak. Uh, uh, when we were touching the holy water, 
down there. Yeah, that man that was amazing yeah, yeah. because we were in the in the Egyptian temple of Karnak with Sara. You know, all the it, that was just like one week after after we meet we meet Sara there in the Sinai, and then after we decide to go all around the all around Egypt, and then we were in in the holy water of one of the temple of Karnak in the ancient place with the priest they were there and then i was just touching the water and then one man said to sara uh, this man is holy this man is is very holy and then we start laughing we start laughing. no back tea no back tea <laughs> no back tea this man is holy <laughs> no back tea. so then and, how is possible honey, because it's yeah tell me uh, wait, what no, I, I was going to say is for, for you to tell the story because it's so hard for me to hear. Yeah, yeah. So, just, just is uh, why one object, one object of a stone like a crystal skull can tell you that, that you have to meet this person? Um, um, why and what's happened after? Uh, uh, okay. Well, the, the crystal skulls originally were the computers of Atlantis. So, uh, like every every computer in the world runs on crystal, on a crystal chip. The crystal in a computer is as pure as the one in the Mitchell Hedges skull. The Mitchell Hedges skull is maybe one of the, the purest bits of crystal, and it needs to be that great to run a computer, which is why they synthesize it. But the crystal skulls are like computers that interact with our DNA. Yeah, so it, it's like, it's, it, so yeah, it's a DNA thing. I can't really explain to people how I communicate with a crystal skull other than it's in my DNA. <coughs> but then the crystal skulls, they have consciousness or they are just like a computer to connect you with another consciousness? Well, I personally see them as a consciousness, as a collective consciousness. And what means collective consciousness? Uh, honey, it's so hard to hear. What, what means collective, collective consciousness? Collective, I know, but I'm, yeah. just, I'm just saying with the interview in general, it's really hard for me to hear. Maybe it's better if I ask you a question and you tell a story because you can hear. Okay. Yes, well, but we, 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 can, we can hear you very good. We hear, we hear you perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, it's very difficult to, to define the crystal skulls because it's like, it's like, um, Yeah, it, it just comes through in thoughts, impulses, synchronicity. You know, you've taken Pacha Mama around the world. You know how she works. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, what, what Sara, what I'm going to explain a little bit what what Sara have told me because I didn't know nothing about crystal skulls. I never play with crystal skull. I even didn't believe nothing in crystal skulls. But from this moment that, that I meet Sarah, from this moment that I meet Sarah with the crystal skulls, I just take in the hand, and that was like this size, very small, uh, made of crystal, of bone, of one of the ancestors of the Tyrannosaurus rex. So that was the fossilized, that was a bone fossilized, made in crystal. And then it was some sculpture, the sculpture, uh, 20 years ago in the United States. So it doesn't mean that these um, crystal skulls of thousand years old is very modern, it's made by machines. But the object, the crystal, the material is the, um, it's a fossilized crystal of one Tyrannosaurus rex no? in the family right now. And then uh, when she told me this crystal want to meet you, crystal want to meet you, for me it was a surprise because I was like, yeah, but this is just an object. How can something told you? And then what Sarah explained me is that this kind of objects, uh, they have some kind of consciousness, when she said like, like global collective consciousness, 
that means a kind of consciousness that extra human that is not even with the, it's not only human it's about natural consciousness and that she can connect like if that was like a kind of telephone she can connect with different consciousness like a connection like a telephone so she can connect with consciousness out of the air she can connect with another kind of non-human consciousness with um, consciousness uh, with no body or death so at that moment she just told me that that when she was she was dreaming, she had this vision that she had to meet this person right just in front of his house. So I was just passing in front and I have the same face, the same hair, everything as she have uh, she have had in the in the vision. And then she told me that the crystal skull said that we have a mission together and the, that she wanted to meet me to make a mission. And the strange thing is that I believe or I don't believe in, in this kind of magic, but I was traveling around the world with these crystal skulls. I was in Mexico, I was in Japan, I was in Australia, I was in, in all Egypt, uh, in many places in Europe. So I traveled the five continents with these crystal skulls and every place it has happened some very weird and strange thing with the crystal skulls. So even if I don't have any proof, because now at that time, we, you know, where mind is very materialistic, we need proof. If we don't, if we don't provide any proof, any photograph, any, any something that makes me a proof or anything that a crystal skulls can connect with consciousness or can attract synchronicities and magic. Uh, any scientific will say that what I am saying is uh, stupid, that what I am saying is, is no value at all, because there is, not, uh, uh, there is not any absolutely scientific proof. But in my way of thinking, I think in 21th century, the science, we are still here, here, here. We cannot imagine how science can develop. So if science now, uh, science now, they have uh, machines or devices that they can check that kind of waves, but they cannot see more than 5% of reality. So why I'm going to, to give the power to these scientifics that they can only check the 5% of reality? And I know that with this crystal skull, I have experienced some part of the other 95% of reality. I have any proof, but uh, no, in this moment, but in another moment when we speak, speak more specifically about crystal skulls, uh, without giving any scientific proof, uh, we are going to give just uh, proofs, human life, human life proofs. And this is what these programs that we are going to see on these conversations, nothing that we are going to speak, nothing that we are going to say, nobody can say is fake because I didn't read in any paper, I didn't read in internet, we didn't, we didn't listen from anybody, we didn't see in any, in any video, in any place. So nobody can tell me this information is fake, because if not, you are just going to tell me that I am a liar. So if you tell me that I am a liar, then what? Then it's the look. So it's a, at the end, it's a thing that I not try to convince Navari, and Sarah is not trying to convince Navari, because we don't need to convince Navari, we don't earn nothing with this, uh, no profit for our monastery, no benefit, uh, nothing. It's just with this kind of videos, we just want to share our experience that they don't have any material proof, but it's just our own experience, our own life. And it will be nice with the time that some other people can join and say, well, we have also uh, some kind of experience that we cannot prove and we cannot understand, but we just come, it's a way just to tell to the people or to the one who are listening, okay, uh, life is not only proof, it's not only material proofs. Uh, life is not only things that we can put in a, in a, in a fridge with a, with a paper with a name. Life is another much more things. So we are just a group of friends that we have experience, a strange experience, uh, with this experience, we just want not to prove, but to well to spread in that in that times the message that there is something going on, there is something more 
than they tell us there are something uh, more than this five percent because now for me we live in a in a moment that or we go this way or we go this way it's, it's difficult to stay in the middle it's a polarization it's a polarization times that means now in our way of life all all everything is telling us that everything that is not measured by the science we we live in a for me we live in a science dictatorship that means everything is not proved by the science is false or is fake and this is one of the more dangerous things i think for human being because you are telling that 90 95 percent or 90 percent or whatever of reality doesn't exist it doesn't mean that this what i am speaking is only one body with one in uh, neuro neuro systems that is telling you things that i have kept in my memory nothing else but the human experience during thousands and thousands of years is telling us with experience that we are something more than this we have the body we have the mind we have something more we can call consciousness we can call uh, soul or we can call um, spirit or whatever and this is a thing that this uh, science science crazy or this dictatorship with the with the science uh, are telling us that it's not true they are denying they are denying absolutely our spirit our soul our synchronicities the magical life and this is really this is really dangerous for the human being because if we continue like this in some years we will be no more than biologic machines and biologic machines uh, it's very easy to control biologic ma machines because it's very easy to control our mind. Our soul and our spirit is impossible to control. Our mind is so easy to control. You can see uh, every time people think less for themselves. People get reproduce what someone up there is telling you to think. And we are just reproducing information in the TV, in the papers, in internet. Um, and we need to be sure that we are something more than these biological machines we are connected with something strong with one collective consciousness and that's why with these examples with sara and then we decide we uh, from ayurveda or from asia viaje we decide um, to do this conversation with sara and we welcome to other people that want to say to 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 tell here also the uh, their experience because 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 for us uh, is the only way to well not to trust or to believe because we didn't we don't need nothing to believe in, in nothing but just a little bit to open to open the to open the mind because i think in that times we live in 2020 um over the establishment our you can call establishment the governments the people who are up there they are they are putting our mind like this closer and closer and closer and closer and i think it's time or you open the mind or you close the mind totally now is not time to be in the in the medium because they will not allow to be in the medium they want our mind close or then you are out and then you open you open the mind so we need for me it's important to have these examples and for me one of the biggest examples of a human that i know that have experienced this other life that scientific cannot prove that experience all this experience for me is sarah that's why it's a way to well it's a way to to just to listen and other things and of course uh, nobody is pay as nobody there is no the right there is no the left there is no someone behind there uh, trying to uh, pay me in the back these videos to the to the to try to destroy uh, the trust in the um, in the politics or in the life as it is no we are just independence and i think it's time independence minds free minds and i think it's time uh, not to do because every time uh, there is a revolution the people up there that they have the power they control the revolution what's days today eh? remember 15m 15m in madrid some years ago almost i don't know eight years ago nine years ago it was kind of consciousness revolution in spain kind of 
they start people from all the po kind of politics people free uh, young people old people people dressed like hippies people with carbide uh, everybody everybody want to say that uh, they they want freedom they don't want more to be controlled under the power of the banks and the politician uh, and all this but every revolution that get this collective revolution is controlled they start to control this revolution they start to put people there and they after they make a party and they say no forget about revolution forget about the streets forget about to say what is happening go and vote this go and vote to this every four years to this to this new party political party and then you got your revolution i think is it's time of individual revolution to get together with the people of course uh, we are a collective and we need we need um, the the um, to be together to join everybody together but we cannot join together if our mind is like this because then we will be thousands of millions of people together with the mind closed we need first as individuals to open the mind and once we have our open mind open and nobody's controlling us is the time to get joined together with the rest because if not every revolution as the French Revolution, the American Revolution, every revolution is have been absolutely controlled by the power. There is no way of fighting against the empire. No, the only way to fight against the empire is with freedom in mind. And freedom, the, the spirit is always free and the heart is always free, but the mind is not free at all. So we need, and for me, a way of to make free the mind is to start to realize that we have some proofs, no material proofs maybe, but we have some proofs. And if you start asking your neighbor, your friends, some family, you will realize that there are many proofs that there are something more that they tell and they exist. Because for me, you have a, a lot of proofs that exist many beyond this planet, beyond this life, beyond this, you know. And for me, you, you, are, you are a big proof you know, yeah, I cannot yeah. tell you that you are a scientific proof, but you, for uh, me, you are uh, a big proof that you have a lot of amazing information uh, uh, that is good, I think, to share with the people. And then another people we share with, with us uh, about this magical life. We're very lucky. We live in a very multidimensional universe. The more we accept other realities, the fuller our life comes. Well, this is what is happening when we speak with a little house, not even house in the China. With no electricity, no, no internet. No electricity. Yes. So, Sara, you were saying about multidimension. Can you explain us a little bit about what means multidimension? We, we see a very tiny fraction of reality. You know, a little teeny bit of the spectrum is all we see. And all around us are other beings that are beyond the frequencies we can see. Our spirit guides, extraterrestrials, our departed loved ones. You know, people sit and they feel alone. Oh, I'm so alone, I'm so lonely. And if they could see the full spectrum, they would always see they were in a crowded place surrounded by spirits that love them. You know, it doesn't matter if nobody in the world loves you. There's spirits that love you and are with you all the time, you know. And if you quiet your mind and you listen, you feel them helping, you feel the direction. If you, if you listen internally, you're always in the right place at the right time. You know, they, like they told me to, to come and meet you, you know. And one of the best connections of my life even though i didn't want to say what they said told me to say to you uh, because it seemed too much still they they connected me to somebody i love um, as much as family in life you know the the absolute moment of destiny that took us on that journey together it couldn't have been chance you know, we've been all over the world to PowerPoints, uh, working with the energies, meeting magical, amazing people. We live in a different world, you know? We live in a five-dimensional world. 
a lot of people, they live in a third dimensional world and all that exists to them is the third dimension. So they're missing out on all of this experience because they think, oh, it's just my imagination or it was just a dream, it didn't mean anything. Instead of following it and saying, where will it take me? If I just trust the adventure, where will it take me? Hey, it brought me here. <laughs> And, you know, it took me to you and all the other amazing people. And I've told you, I've just started making a little reality show, trying to sort of film the synchronicities and things as, as I'm going along, because sometimes it's so hard to explain to people how synchronicity works, how it can't be chance. You know, one time is chance, two times is chance, a million times, it's not chance. A million times is an unseen force helping us, you know? A million times is there's more involved in the story than what we just see. We're just the, the actors on stage. We don't see the director. We don't see the producer. We don't see the film crew, you know? We just see the part of reality that we're in. And... So people are missing out this huge chunk of life experience just by pursuing what exists in the third dimension. And all of that's just an illusion anyway. And, and that is because, because, so the way to connect with this another dimension, the way to connect with all the spirit world, with all this that is beyond the third dimensional, you have to have a gift or you got a gift or is something that you can you can practice, or see, or is something that you can open, or is just some people who have this gift? Okay, all right. Can you? I believe. No, everybody, absolutely everybody has this genetic. Everybody has this in their DNA. It's activating the DNA, and the more you activate the DNA the more you have like connection with your ancestors, connection with the spirit world. Our DNA is a computer, like the crystal skulls are a computer. You know, they can record us, they've recorded a song on uh, one strand of DNA. You know, the computers of the, fr of the future, the quantum computers will be DNA. We are computers. AI just has a faster processing chip than we do, you know? That's all it is. The computer has a faster processing chip, but we are a computer. And our DNA, within our DNA, is all the information in the universe. We just have to tap into it. You know, so a lot of the stuff we talk about when we're talking about spirituality is actually DNA activation codes. You know, if I start saying Merlin, Excalibur, King Arthur, Holy Grail, People are like, this, is on it. this resonates with me. I don't understand why I connect with this. But it's because it's within the DNA computer. It activates that part of our DNA. So in all the sacred sites you go to, all the different magical people, the shaman you meet, the initiations you do, these are all just activating more and more of your DNA so that you can become more and more in contact with your higher self. Um, and then, uh, which practice, for example, which practice you recommended? For example, for people who are living in these three dimensionals, which kind of practice to open your mind, to activate your DNA, you can do? Okay, honey, you know, you know me well, and you know if I sit here and I tell you I meditate, that I meditate every day, you know that's bullshit, don't you? You know, that's absolute bullshit if I tell you that I have any discipline that I do. Okay, so we won't start with bullshit. We'll just say, just start dreaming. Just start dreaming about what you want in life. Just dream about what you want to create. Dream of yourself in beautiful places. Dream of yourself with amazing people. And your dreams will come true. Okay, so it's, it's a really good, yeah, yeah. It's Put a really into good, your good. computer what you want it to produce in your reality. Yeah, so it's, it's about... You know, just program your computer and your computer. 
Claro. Because if we just program yeah. our computer in no, these three dimensions. Your computer, your computer program reality. Mm. Yeah, because if we just we just program our three dimensionals. It's all a computer, honey. Exist. You know, the entire universe is a mathematical equation. We live inside a computer, whether it's a biological computer or an artificial. It's a matrix. Yeah, the universe is a matrix. It's a computer. It's a mathematical program. The nature of the program, we don't know. We don't think it's a big metal computer in the sky. You know, we believe it's, it's consciousness. You know, but it's still, it's a mathematical program. Reality is frozen light. You know, it's just frozen light interpreted by the mind. Light traveling at 3,000 miles a second to create an image for a microsecond. You know, and the brain takes it in and translates it and tells us what we see. But we're just looking at frozen light that our mind captures for a second. <coughs> it's not everything that's out there, you know, we see a fraction of it. Mm -hmm. And the more and more we allow ourselves to live in more and more of our senses in our dimensions, the more we don't tell ourselves we're being stupid, if we have a sudden memory, if we're in a place and we think, I've been here before, but I've never been here before in this life. So why do I know this place? Why am I familiar? Why do I know my, like when we were in Luxor, we knew Luxor Temple, honey. We walked around Luxor Temple like we'd been there a million times. You know, we go to the priest pool, we go to the Temple of Sekhmet. You know, the people working in the temple recognize us. The man at the priest pool, when he says that our kind, we don't come so often anymore. And his family had tended the priest pool for generations and generations. But our souls, we know we've been there and our souls, we go back and we, we, we trace our footsteps. We pick up our, our energy. You know, the matrix is on a time loop. The, the the scenery changes, you know, the scenery changes, but the souls don't change. Your face might change each lifetime I meet you, but I see you and I know you and I connect and we go. You know, it's not uh, dependent, but definitely the matrix is on a time loop. You know, I'm here with uh, Queen Bathsheba, the wife of King David. You know, you remember uh, the, the father of Solomon, or yeah, the yeah, son yeah. of Solomon, King David. Uh, his wife, Bathsheba. One of the people is Bathsheba. And we're like, you know, it's very strange. You know, there's Bathsheba and Sarah sitting on the beach in ancient Sinai. You know, nothing's changed since the biblical times. And we're like, the scenery's changed, but the story's the same. And it's becoming more and more obvious that the scenery is changing, but the story is the same. You know? It's, uh... Yeah, it's a very interesting reality. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and it's a pity that mostly of the population of this planet are, we are, mostly of the population of the planet, we are close to these realities. We are close to that, that other part of reality. Yeah. Um, and what, what yeah, do you think? I mean, you know, eternal, eternal life is about eternal memory. Uh, uh, I think you have to remember truly who you are before you can get out of the game. Remember your name to exit the game. You know, if you don't remember who you are, then you'll be issued with a new skin suit, you'll incarnate again, and you'll start your journey all over again until you truly remember who you are. Mm. Yes, so this is, this is a thing also about 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 constantly reincarnation. I can't hear you. This is a thing about constant reincarnation that is amazing that the Buddhists, the Hindu, Sorry, even, in, um, even, you know, that even the Christians, before one of the concilium in third century, Christianity also believed in reincarnation. That was after the third or fourth century, 
when Christianity uh, start to say that that was not reincarnation at all. And you know, and you know why, why they, they were staying in Christianity. And you know, if, even if we are not Christians, or even if, if, if it is not a theocracy, our, our roots, at least from the last hundreds of years, we have in Europe, Europe has been during 2000, no, 1,500 years, a Christian country. Um, in Europe, before with the Celts, uh, uh, with the beginning of the first Christians, with the ancient tribes they have here, with the, with the Indo-European tribes, all of them they believe in, in reincarnation. And, and you know why they cut, they, cut, uh, they cut us our belief in reincarnation? What they cut our belief in reincarnation, our contact, our contact with the reincarnation, if you close your mind to this, then you don't believe anymore. This is a dimension that is, is, is close to us. And this is because if now uh, I am here and I am doing this, if I believe in, reincar in, in reincarnation, next time I can be a priest or I can be a rich person or last life I can be, I can be, um, I can be a poor. And then that people they were up there with the with the christianity in this concilium that they wanted to destroy about reincarnation they couldn't afford that maybe the people who are uh, farmers working maybe they were high priests before and maybe these high priests they will be farmers after they wanted to continue up up there and to continue up there you cannot you cannot you cannot believe that maybe last life you were not there and then next life you will be there. You have to believe that you always have been in the high hierarchy. That's why they cut, they cut our, they cut our believing in, in, in reincarnation in another, in another life. And this is a thing, this is a pity because that was made in purpose. So now when you speak with mostly of your friends well maybe your friends no but you speak with mostly of of our friends in a country like like for example in spain everybody laughing well not everybody no we know that not everybody laughing but mostly of the people that you will know especially especially of course uh, if you are more with the scientific mind uh, you you it's not that you believe in or you don't believe in reincarnation the problem is that you deny in reincarnation because, okay, I can have a proof in reincarnation, or maybe I don't have a proof. Maybe my proof in reincarnation is totally subjective, and I cannot prove another. But it doesn't mean that you deny. And our civilization absolutely deny reincarnation, absolutely deny the spirits, deny this matrix that you speak, deny another dimensions. This is the problem, that they deny it. And if, when you study in the university, any kind, biology, uh, medicine, science, any kind of university that you study, they are going to deny reincarnation, they are going to deny uh, another dimensions, past life, energies, telepathy, they are going to deny absolutely everything. So if you start in the first hour of the first course, learning that this is not true, as a civilization, we are cutting absolutely this. So in our civilization, at the end, we can say that it's true. Nothing of this exists. That's why the, I think the only way is what you say is, if you, we start dreaming, we start open the mind, we start dreaming in what can it be, maybe all these synchronicities start to give in a little proof. And one, one nice example, I don't know if you remember, when we were inside the temple of, of Sehmet in Karnak, that is one of the more powerful places I know and more magical place. When we were there, we were doing kind of, that was my first kind of ceremony. I never did any kind of ceremony. And we were just under the statue of Sehmet. We put a candle, we light a fire, a small fire, incense. And then suddenly you start speaking with a strange voice that I really never listened to you, this voice. It was not your voice. You close your eyes. It was very, very, very strange. Really, really amazing. For me, it was the first time that I see that who is, who is there? Who is in the mind of my friend Sarah? That is not Sarah. And then 
Uh, that's why, because I wanted to connect the spirits and I asked you, Sarah, uh, can you do something? Because I don't believe, you know, my civilization, my society have broke, closed my mind to believe in a spirit world. Can you make me something? Can you make some proof? Can you give me something to, to really, because I want to dream in the spirits. I want to start to believe in the spirits. And I remember that then, uh, we make this ceremony, like you start to, to sing, to say all the name of the goddess, Isis, Estarte, Diana, Hecatita, Kali, Inanna, Maria, all the names of the ancient goddess. And once that you start singing and singing and singing, yeah, you start to feel a little bit different, strange. But the strange thing is that suddenly with another voice, you were singing with your own voice, but suddenly another voice, very strange, then you start to see like, why you call me? Why you want to? Why you want from us? And I was like a fret. It's like, wow, who is who is there? And I was just ask them like, well, uh, sorry, I just I just need a little proof, a tiny proof. I just need a proof because I want to believe, you know. And and I cannot believe. I don't believe. I just need a proof. And then suddenly, with the same uh, voice, you tell me, you will have so many proofs in your life, but now is not the moment but don't worry you will have so many small proofs in your life and then from that moment i start to open a little bit to these small proofs and i have i cannot tell you hundreds thousands of proofs of these small small little proofs um in the travel i did after this we were all around egypt every day i have proofs every day small proofs but every day we have have a lot of proofs so I was a person that I didn't believe in magic. I didn't believe, at least as a mind, I always knew magic exists. I always was open to this. But my mind that I was very much into the science. I love science. I, I, I grow listening Carl Sagan. I didn't grow listening, uh, I don't know, Sri Aurobindo, for example. I was, listen, I was growing with the science. I, I was loving science. Um, I have conversation with my friend inside and so I was totally close to this and when you tell me this and when I listen to this I start to see so many small proofs that this is kind of thing that we want to do with these videos is the only thing that we want to do to these videos open mind open spirits to let uh, more people more people dream because at the end we are all one um, and what is nice we have children you, you, you always have children. Uh, we will die sooner or late, but our children will live, I wish, much longer than us, and the children, our children, much longer. So uh, I think we have to spread some seeds of open mind and open spirits. Because if we don't start putting more seeds and seeds and give more proofs um, just to tell the people, dream, dream, go out a little bit and, and dream. I think life can be every time more <gasps> coronavirus, coronavirus, paranoia, paranoia, fear, fear, fear. Oh, what can I do? Boat, four years. And the rest, boom, boom, boom. This is what I always say, the, the apocalypse zombies is having. Not zombies. Zombies is not the people who are dying and they come alive. People, the zombies are the people who don't think from the self. This is when you are a zombie when you don't think for yourself. And maybe at that time before meet you, I was not thinking for myself. I was thinking what the media told me, what the religion told me, what the science told me, what in the university told me, don't believe in magic, don't believe in nothing that you can see, don't believe in extraterrestrials, don't believe in healing, don't believe in Reiki, don't believe in energies, don't believe in, in natural medicines. And then I was not thinking for myself. And I think this is the biggest problem in humanity now, that someone, someone that I don't think is very, very uh, nice is thinking for us. They are thinking for us. And then I see, I see more friends and more people that is like, McFly, think for yourself, even if you are wrong, even if you don't know what you're saying, but think for yourself, be a little bit a child. Uh, uh, come back to your to you to you to your heart think for yourself um, um, well I think this is what uh, we want to do with this kind of video 
So, well, it's almost 12.30. Uh, we always say that it's better, um, very, very good people than a lot of people. So we are not millions <laughs> in this video, but the ones who we are here, wow, we are amazing. So we are recording this, so we will, we will send, if someone wants to see these videos, and share these videos, so we don't earn nothing with this, uh, we don't work for nothing with this, we don't have any intention with this, just we want a better open and free world for us and for our child. If you believe, eat it. If you don't believe, coronavirus, coronavirus. We believe, we believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you believe, this is, it's good to believe, at least to believe in the things that you are experienced. So you can believe what, we are going to tell many of the things about our experience with Reiki, with natural medicines, with extraterrestrials, um, with many, many uh, things. Um, well, this time we are speaking more me and Sarah, but these uh, times maybe that will, will be your time, uh, Pepe or Sophia, to, sp to speak, because I know that you have a lot of experience. For example, biomagnetic. Biomagnetic is something amazing and it's something that Mm, the, pro, the normal scientifics they cannot explain and they don't believe and they deny but we know the the, the magnetic pairs that you are doing they, they work and we know uh, what Pepe are doing we know what Pepe and you have seen in the sky what Sarah have seen in the sky that one day I will see in the sky so next time maybe you you can tell us some experience if there is another people they can tell us uh, uh, another more experience just to share and if you won't believe, believe it. And if no, don't believe it. Uh, we are not um, we are not earning nothing for this. So Sarah, something more to say? Good. Just, just for, as I say, just for people to be brave. Don't be controlled by fear. You know, every person you've ever come into contact with in your life could have had a communicable disease. Every, how many times have you risked AIDS in your life? How many times have you risked this disease and that disease? Nobody should be living in fear now. Just get on with it. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you Sarah, much. for being there. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Pepe Sofia. What? Thank it's you. a very big pleasure. And please uh, keep in contact. We love to hear you, Kike and Sarah. Yeah. Yes, and we love to hear you. And next time you will say a little bit. This is just open for the people to have this experience. This is the, the nice thing that if you tell your experience, I said my experience, you say my experience. And you know, we know that nobody is paying us. Well, pues maybe after listening many people telling this experience, just coming from the head, we can be open. We can be a little bit more open. So thank you very much. And yes, as Sarah said, keep strong, um, not fear. Relax mind. Fear make disease. No fear. No fear. No fear. No fear. fear is the no. mind killer. Yeah, this is the mind killer. This is the spirit killer. Fear, and this is what we have to try to to avoid. So see you next time. We will we will tell you when will be the next connection. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.